Hello everybody, welcome back to the Epic Gear Cup number two. We're headed very quickly towards our second semi-final of the day with My Insanity versus SK Prime. I am James Stress O'Leary. Alongside me is Jake Frost Buzzin. After a, a pretty convincing performance from Mouse against Unicorns of Love, let's see what this other best of one will bring for us here. Yeah, my stream seems to have stuck a little bit, so it's going to be a little bit behind on Picks and Bounds. There we go, it, it, it's arrived on uh, on my stream as well. as uh, We I do unfortunately have to cast from the stream because uh, not enough spectator slots on the live client to allow us all into the game, so we're going to be behind on the actual Picks and Bounds. You're going to see everything first, then you're going to say, wow, these casters are so bad because they're not going to be able to uh, predict anything. But Kha'Zix, Thresh, and LeBlanc have been banned out already. We talked a little bit about, a bit about Kha'Zix in game number one. Now LeBlanc, we saw in game one, having a massive effect. Yeah, uh, she pretty much enforced the, the jungle presence that uh, Lee Sin was already giving uh, Mouse Esports. So, not going to be available this game, not going to be able to have the same kind of uh, presence as it did with the previous game. Uh, of course, these are different teams, uh, not quite sure what... So I have no idea where I'm going with that, so I'm, it's I'm, okay. I'm just going to stop. We're, we're behind on the stream, I think we're looking to predict this, uh, this fifth band that's coming out. I'm trying to think because my Insanity are a team that have been around a little while here, and uh, I think SK is just going to go for a standard ban on that one with Wukong. As, as we said, we are behind the stream here, so it, it's one of those things that we're going to be late on our predictions. So it's kind of tricky to predict uh, what's coming up in the past, because we don't have it. So that's why you might hear a stumble a little bit in this champion select. So at the current point we're at, we're waiting for this last ban. Wouldn't be surprised to see a Lulu here. It hasn't appeared on my screen yet. I could just be saying that to try and trick you all, but uh, my insanity, are they going to ban anything? Nope, they're just going to let that time out. We saw that yesterday actually, with a ban timing out. I wonder. Oh no, they did actually ban Yasuo. That's, uh, hmm. Very strange. Yasuo banned out, then Evelyn picked up as the first pick for SK. Right, so that is... Um, she was picked up earlier today as well, so uh, she's still going strong in the jungle with, of course, the nerfs to Vi and Elise. It does mean that she's that little bit closer to the top. Um, with the AD tank that uh, I believe it was Diamond Prox brought to the EU scene. Uh, yeah, Diamond's been a big proponent of EVE for uh, as long as Diamond has been jungling and uh, not too surprising to see Evelyn being picked up as the first pick there. However, fairly surprising to see a Lulu and a Renekton get through to that uh, first round of picks on the red side. Both have been picked up and both are very strong laners. Yeah, Renekton is, is uh, even with the nerfs to his Dominus, where they, uh, I believe they reduce their damage done from the tick to it and they increase the cooldown, he's still going to be a very top tier class uh, top laner. And he really just has so many good lane matchups that even a pick like Trundle at times doesn't do as well as you'd expect that uh, Renekton just has such a good early laning phase. So alongside that, Karma is actually going to be picked up here in the support role, which we've seen a couple of times recently. Katie Ross to be at one point running that Karma in a dual mid lane. Wonder whether we'll see that coming out from SK in this series. But we're waiting on the jungle for, or not even has, having to be jungle, we're waiting on the next two picks here for my insanity. Looks That's like they are going to go for the jungle there with a Pantheon. Pantheon, right. I'm, I'm 20 seconds behind on stream to you, so ah. I'm getting things relatively slow. <laughs> Interesting. Okay, so that's uh, that's be pretty interesting. So I'll make sure that uh, I am getting things as fast as possible from this. So it looks like they want to lock in the Pantheon. They do indeed lock that one in. Lucian alongside that one. And uh, that means that we're still waiting on a support out of my insanity. Unless they were looking to run Lulu support, which, to be honest, we haven't seen that much. And when it's available for that middle lane, typically that's where you want to see that locked in. Yeah, there's, there's that age right. Uh, there's the age-old quote where, if they're better in mid lane, why would you run them in support? You just run them in mid lane, and you just take another top tier support class. Um, the Pantheon pick, in relation to Evelyn, uh, 
if they're looking to take early control, I, I would assume of that. Evelyn's going to have a bit more impact scaling into the uh, later part of the game uh, with the uh, Agony's Embrace, I believe it is. Yep. Um, uh, the Grand Skyfall, he's going to have quite a bit of effect in terms of zoning, but uh, the Agony's Embrace is going to have a greater effect in general due to the slow that it can give and the fact that it gives, of course, Evelyn a shield to absorb more damage. So the final picks have been locked in for SK. Of course, Exile is going to pick up Gragas if it's available for him. He is a uh, very well-renowned mid lane. I was about to say jungle then on jungle, Gragas, but nope, mid lane is Exile with uh, that Gragas. We've seen that time and time again, and now we haven't seen Leona in a couple of days. Ever since the the uh, advent of Morgana coming back into things, uh, and in some respects Zyra in a game or two, we haven't seen too much Leona, but she is of course still fairly strong with that solar flare down as the support pick. I wonder whether we'll see that locked in, because I wonder how that's going to do against a, uh, a lane such as Karma, who's going to have a lot of movement speed in that lane, but if they get locked down, could end up falling to that, but still waiting on the Leona, about 10 seconds left until it locks. So the Gragas versus, uh, for now, I'm going to assume Lulu. Uh, I'm guessing that Leona's been locked in by now. Yes, it has just locked in. Okay, so the Gragas versus Lulu mid is going to be a lane to watch. Well, neither should have kill potential on the other one, so to say. They both go extremely well with jungler ganks, so I would not be surprised to see either one of the junglers try and create some early action mid lane. And both have a lot of uh, extra utility in that middle lane role from the mid game onwards, because... Gragas will always be relevant because of his disengage from the explosive cask. The same with uh, Lulu. Provided the rest of her lanes aren't too far behind, she can actually still deal uh, a lot of utility in the fights, has that ultimate to keep people alive, the shields as well, slows and the speed ups and everything that goes with a Lulu in the middle lane. So we're going to be heading into this best of one series here between SK Gaming Prime and My Insanity. As we head into the delay period, we're going to be back in just a couple of minutes, guys, with the best of one semi-finals.
Hello everybody, welcome to the Epic Gear Cup number two finals, I guess specifically to the Mozilla Army and the Chosen Army that have uh, decided to join us in chat for their respective teams. Now, looks like this one might be a little bit more of a defensive start out for these two teams. I am James Strasseri, alongside me is Jake Frost Buzzard, and we are into this best of one series between My Insanity on the red side and SK Gaming Prime on the blue. Yeah, straight off the bat, it looks like we have an invade from. Uh, I can't remember the. Well, my the, insanity looked like they might be going for it, it, but it might be a delayed, uh, a delayed invade, and I don't know. They also look like they're just expecting the invade from SK Prime because they they're all stacked in this bush, just kind of waiting for one member to come across. Mm. So this is one of these things with the new patch. Of course, trinkets not being active until two minutes into the game. A lot of teams are questioning whether there are going to be these level 1 plays. It does look like though that we're going to see a lane swap. I think that is when Exxon going back. It is. So we are going to see a 1v2 and 2v1 lane up on the top and bottom lanes respectively. It does also mean that this blue buff from SK Prime is likely not going to be theirs. There we go. There's these delayed invades. Again, even as casters, sometimes these level 1 strats kind of just end up materializing late here. Looks like both teams are actually going to go in for the very delayed invade. So two minutes and no buff has been started. Oh no, Trundle forced to flash already. But this really should tell both teams what is going on here. Looks like the 2v1s are going to be in force here. But one thing to note, SK Prime do have a teleport if they wanted to change up these lanes. Yeah, uh, Trando looks like he's just going to go and take the Wraiths and or Wolves and just go back to lane. He's just going to go clear up blue buff effect instead of doing that. May choose to go take some jungle as well because with Aeliona and Lucian, they are going to be extremely aggressive in the early game. So he wants to be a little bit careful. He wants to let that wave come to the turret first before he does it. He, he, before he, he goes a bit too far. Man, Perfect took a couple of barrels there in the middle lane already, and that's going to give him a little bit more of a difficult lane there with, uh, of course, both Doran Rings start on those mid laners, means that you have a limited number of potions really to uh, sustain yourself up. So before that shield was available, took a couple of barrels and did cost quite a bit of mana from Exile, though. So they've just got to be a bit careful about mana uh, managing that mana and health balance in the lane. Yeah. Uh, meanwhile, uh, at bottom lane, the chosen one <laughs> uh, seems to be taking a little bit of poke from Karma. Of course, Karma and Caitlyn are going to be extremely poke heavy. Uh, they both have relatively decent range, uh, especially Caitlyn, uh, and they both have uh, skills to uh, help zone someone do a lot of damage. Looks like we're going to go for the uh, defensive play out of SK to try and uh, hold this top lane tower with... Uh, it looks like Perry is going to be angling his way back around to the tower, but neither jungler really wants to go aggressive, which is uh, a little uncharacteristic for these two V1s. Typically, you see one team shove on, and you have to think that with uh, My Insanity being the initiators here, they have to get more work done here because Karma and Caitlyn is going to be a very heavy push lane down into this bottom turret. You can see it's already at a third of the health remaining, whereas up in top lane, hardly any damage has been done. Uh, yeah, that is just the effectiveness of the uh, decreased damage from the previous uh, eight minutes of the game. Uh, previous eight minutes? The first uh, eight minutes of the game, sorry. Uh, it's just going to take 20 less damage from auto attacks, I believe it is. Oh. Would you like to see a tower dive? Mozilla's going to get dropped there in that top lane. That's the first kill going over to SK, though. Silver carry gets dropped fairly low. Harry will survive this one. I like penguins as well, pretty low. and. That's something, uh, you know, at least it's not embarrassing to say as a caster, but however, that is uh, a kill for a kill in that top lane. Trundle going to teleport back. Remember on the uh, last patch, that teleport is going to have a reduced cooldown as well because he teleported to the turret. Bottom lane turret falls in favor of SK, so they come up pretty well in that uh, trade. Yeah, uh, not going to be that much to happen up top lane now. Uh, of course, the top lane from my insanity, he's going to look to push and get a fair amount of damage done on to that tower, but after that engage, it's not going to really be that much to do, especially with such a large wave pushing it into the tower. There's a cannon min as well, so uh, Lucian should be able to get back in time for most of that. 
Oh man, a 1v1 kill in the middle lane as well there is perfect. Already had Exile dropped fairly low in that exchange and typically that is not something you expect in a laning phase and it's actually not something we expect to see out of Exile at all because Exile is a fairly consistent mid laner but he's already down 14 CS and now down a kill in that middle lane and that really does set up My Insanity's mid lane fairly well now. Yeah, we wouldn't normally expect to see a solo kill on Gragas in general because of the damage through reduction on the on the Drunken Rage. I believe it's something like 20%. So, especially from uh, when the opponent is, is a Lulu. You can see that uh, movement speed bestowed onto his Vanillan here and a good swap up into the top lane as the 2v2 is now in effect. It looks like Penguins is going to try and get in on the side, but Perry will find him out now. Tags him with a couple of hate spikes. Forced to flash out over the wall. Perry's going to follow him. Exile with a nice roam up from having that lane shoved. Picks up that kill. That's just wrong place, wrong time by I like Penguins. He's trying to cause a little bit of aggression. Uh, and it certainly was caused, but I don't think it was caused in all the right places. He was looking for an angle around the duo lane in the in the top side of the map and maybe to look to steal some jungle away, but as you said, wrong place, wrong time. Not exactly the uh, the best time to be going aggressive now that that 2v2 is in effect in the top lane. Zenith Blade didn't quite land there, so uh, my insanity just going to take a couple of shots from Caitlyn just to keep them back. I wouldn't be surprised if we saw some action from SK Perry pretty soon. Uh, he is level 6 compared to Pantheon's level 4. Uh, I think after the split buff he won't even be level 5. He's still only just into level 4. He's about uh, 1 camp into level 4. That could be really problematic because as a Pantheon you're looking for that level 6 for the Grand Skyfall. Meanwhile top lane's vanilla. Dropped uh, under a third of his health, but they've traded good damage back onto Silver Carry. Uh, Caitlyn should be able to just life to all of that back up if she has it from her room. It just means uh, because she doesn't have any items apart from Doran's Blade, she's just going to take Here's... a little bit longer to life to. Here's that aggressive play you were talking about with Perry looking for a gank there. Silver Carry dropped very low, but that is just going to force them back and now force the pressure to the tower. I wouldn't. Well, actually, uh, this, this tower could, could very well fall. It's just hit 8 minutes, so that's pretty dangerous. Uh, it no longer has the damage reduction from the, the auto attacks. And of course, that uh, is going to be a, a big part of the rotation games here from SK. Is they've already taken down that bottom lane turret, and forcing the 1v1 down in bot means that there's not a lot of dragon control out for my insanity. You can see that Mozilla feels confident enough to trade here but uh, just going to force Renekton back. So SK just keeping all of the action in the top side of the map means they can capitalize on this push out of Caitlyn and really just prevent my insanity from even looking towards the dragon. Uh, Exile over in mid lane actually got uh, pushed out by uh, Soz Perfect, which again, even after that solo kill, it, he still hasn't been able to get back into the lane yet. It's kind of fortunate for him though that he picked up that kill uh, on the two penguins out in the jungle. That actually has kind of been a saving grace for him. It, it's kept him in contention in that middle lane so that it really is only 200 gold difference. Without that kill, you're thinking of a massive difference between the two. Bottom lane, Mozilla, nice flash out in the position of the pillar, made sure that he could get away with that one fairly easily. But this has now started to turn a little bit more passive. As uh, SK have kind of slowed down on their push here. SK is having a real hard time over in, in the mid and bottom lane. Top lane, they're, they're not having the best of times, but it's certainly a better time than they're having in mid and bottom. I try to, you're going to use that TP back, back to the tower. Going to get the reduced cooldown on it. Speaking of that bottom lane uh, disparity between the two, you can see it's over 20 CS right now and that's not somewhere that they want to be and it'll start ending up translating into uh, some big item differences depending on the back timing. So you can see Caitlyn already having finished those level 2 boots, so the extra attack speed, uh, typically you'll see uh, team uh, AD carries picking up a BF sword as a big damage spike, but the extra attack speed for this tower pushing is actually going to help her uh, in a considerable way as well. And being 20 CS down on a Lucian Leona lane is dreadful as well. While they can, while they can still fight for, uh, for now, if they hadn't taken um, 
took the advantage of it. I'm stumbling over my words here. Uh, they're going to be in trouble late game. Oh, Penguins. Penguins gets the ultimate out from Lulu as Perry gets dropped very low. That's a big barrel roll. And Penguins gets the Ignite slapped onto him. Perfect now going to get pillared away. But Exile not quite able to get the auto attack down right in time. Nice sidestep out from the barrel roll. Glitter Lance is not going to be enough to save him from the body slam. That is another kill for Exile. And from being behind in that 1v1, is now 3 and 1 up. This should be an easy dragon for SK. Meanwhile, top lane, they're, they're going to take the tower as well, so they're going to reap all the global objectives here. That's a big gold spike now going over to SK. They've got themselves three and a half thousand gold. But no, that's not the right math. Two thousand gold. I'm stuck in the last game when we had three and a half. Now it's a little bit closer to three. It's three thousand gold there. Again, maths on stream is not always the best thing to do, but... SK have a lot of gold as the advantage. It's Vanillin forced the 90 caliber net out. Actually, that's a Leona ultimate. Here comes Renekton up to the top lane, but the problem is with this Karma and the level two boots that are onto Caitlyn, they should be able to get away from this. And it looks like they want to try and stand and fight. Zenith Blade comes in because Perry is here uh, from the side, and that's not really what they want there. And I'm kind of surprised that my insanity would have chosen to fight that one when really they didn't have the position for it. Penguin steps on the trap. That should spell the end of that engagement. <laughs> if Penguins had Grand Skyfall, that would have been a whole lot worse for SK Prime. Lulu trying to do a bit of work here, but not going to quite be able to get onto it by herself. My Insanity should be able to push this turret down, so they will take a consolation prize from this one, but down in the bottom lane at the same time, Trundle pushing away so it, it's kind of uh, you take with one hand and you uh, well they, they give with one hand they take away with the other on the side of SK so they've given a turret and now they're pushing in the bottom lane so I mean SK comfortably ahead here and without dragon as an objective you have to think that their rotation towards mid lane is going to be the next focus for them that is very likely uh, there's not that many outer turrets left in the game the Grand Sky is going to come down here not going to do too much uh, uh, unless it was just to deter Gragas away, they're gonna get the stun down and Exile might be in trouble. Forced the Lulu ultimate as well. There's the explosive cast to try and save him. Barrel Roll is just gonna disengage this and I was gonna say, unless it's just to force Gragas away, they're not gonna get a kill there and expended a good few ultimates. And they used the Panathion Flash. So oh yeah. that's the Renekton one too actually. They, they used an awful lot there. That was a lot for no return out of my insanity. And that may seem like small uh, bits of an advantage for SK, but when you take into account SK are ahead already, those escapes being down is actually quite brutal here because my insanity know the next objective for SK. It's obviously that middle tower. And now they don't really have the escapability or the global pressure from the Pantheon Ultimate to really do too much elsewhere on the map. I, I would think that not this wave, but the wave after, where there should be a siege minion, if I'm correct, and they're going to have the Gragas ultimate up then, that's when they're going to want to tower dive. Of course, Gragas and Eve just having a little peek into their jungle, saying, we can see you, we know where you are. You can see just Caitlyn using that uh, range to her advantage. This is good setting up camp here from SK Gaming. They've set out deep wards. Penguins is actually taking a massive amount of damage from those hate spikes. Agony's Embrace is going to slow. Ignite is enough to put Exile onto a rampage after the explosive cask. Just dodging that barrel roll is Lulu, but Chosen One gets locked down. Not quite in turret range. Can he get around the side? Not able to get away. Chosen One drops to Mozilla. That overall is two kills going over to SK Gaming, and now they're going to rotate towards that middle lane. And they have, well, it's not quite a perfect wave, but they, they, they have a wave uh, waiting in mid lane, of course. And Lulu's just going to throw out the, the Glitch Lance. Going to try and slow them down, but... Not going to be able to slow them that much. Here's See, that cannon summer. wave, as you it were is. just saying. There's that cannon wave that you were talking about, pushing into that middle lane. We'll spell the end of this middle turret. First world problems over there for Caitlyn. Has red buff. He's getting tower aggro. Yeah, but she's not going to be worried too much about that one. Sol's perfect. Has to be careful here. Pilt over Peacemaker is... No, the Ace in the Hole not available yet. Still a third of the cooldown left. So uh, I don't actually think she has a mana for it anyway. Yeah, got away with that one pretty handily. 
An interesting note there down in that bottom lane was that Lucian was trying to push in while all of that was going on. And again, Mozilla having that teleport available is uh, a pretty big tool here for SK. Teleported down to that bottom lane, deterred Lucian from really doing any work down there. And you can see he shoved it out with that cannon wave just to get it as far out of the, uh, the side of the base from SK as possible. My sanity here seemed to be looking to try and make a trap happen. But... I don't, uh, Trindle was playing a little bit too safe for that. Panthion's just going to waste his time a little bit more, which, considering that he's already at two-thirds of, of the CS of Evelyn, that's going to be deadly. That's, yeah, we've already seen how uh, Pantheon and Evelyn have been trading in this game, and Pantheon, for the most part, has lost out in every one of those trades. Now Evelyn's got that giant's belt, uh, Pantheon's damage traded back just is not going to be as much anymore, because... She's going to be able to survive through that, take into account also the shield she's going to get from Agony's Embrace. While it is only uh, level 1 ultimate for now, it's still extra health to chunk through, and SK Gaming Prime are going to be very aggressive here, taking away all of the jungle that they can from my insanity, and SK just looking to complete their control of the jungle before Dragon comes up in 30 seconds. Uh, Caitlyn's items seem to be looking to tower push as well. They don't really seem to be looking to say, yes, we'll, we'll team fight you now, kind of thing. She's looking to go for a bloodthirst uh, phantom dancer, which screams to me that they're just looking to siege towers all day. That's something they've been doing for pretty much the majority of the game as well. And it, I mean, we've seen that 2v1 not work out here for my insanity and... That's the risk of 2v1ing in the top lane, is that that extra resistance, plus if you don't get that 3v1 properly, or 3v2 in the case that it was uh, in this game, if you don't maximize your efficiency on that, you end up falling behind, and that's really what has kind of set this game up for my insanity, and now they've dropped another dragon. 5,000 gold is the lead here for SK Prime. They may look to collapse onto Pantheon up top lane. They are sending Evelyn and Karma. Karma is going to be found out by Leona though. So, it's just going to be Pantheon versus Evelyn by the looks of it. And I'm not sure Pantheon's going to win that. Evelyn's not going to see him. That'll be uh, a, a sigh of relief that uh, Pantheon would have been breathing if, of course, he was able to spot out Eleve uh, Evelyn. But nevertheless, Penguins gets away with that one. Let's take a look at how much gold he's got on him. Only just under 600 gold, so it's not even like he's close to finishing off uh, a completed item either, so uh, they've got to be a bit careful now, because the itemization is so far ahead on the side of SK. You look, finished Blade of the Rune King on Trundle to just a giant spell Brutalizer on Renekton. They need to start getting some more completed items on the side of my insanity. The Nisi Large Rod from Lulu, perhaps coming out a little bit early, though she was manhandling uh, Gragas, so, so to say. Not going to need the extra magic for the resistance that the, that the Athenes would give her. So, just saying, I want more damage now, perhaps. Yeah, we've seen a, a couple of different little builds out of uh, a couple of different champions here. As you said, not quite finishing that Athenes is something a little bit surprising about that. Uh, we've also seen different builds out of AD carries on Caitlyn. Ooh, here comes the Grand Skyfall. They're going to lock down with that Solar Flare as well. Perry takes the brunt of the damage there. The shield did pop from Agony's Embrace. Exile actually takes most of the channel out from the Culling, and Perfect gets dropped very low at the back. Mozilla is on cleanup duty here. Ace in the hole gets blocked, but all that's going to do now is put more damage onto the rest of my insanities. Vanillan is actually taken out by Penguins. Now that Brutalizer is starting to shred through people, but Mozilla is not going to be able to dive the turret from that one. Exile and Mozilla still standing alongside a very low health parry, and it's only the Chosen One and Silver carry that are left alive here for My Insanity, and they can't defend that turret. So My Insanity engaged that, and they went three for two. They said, yes, we want to fight this now, and they use the Grand Skyfall with the Solar Flare. That should have been easy kills for them, but that just shows how far behind they are. Like they really need more than a normal engage at this point to try and win anything. Yeah, they need to get an engage where they follow up with objectives. That's one of the most difficult things of playing from behind is you can get a fight, 
that goes your way or even half goes your way uh, but unless you get multiple fights like that you don't actually get much return from it you need fights where objectives go to you afterwards and there you can see the uh, new frost queen's claim animation going off onto soz perfect there in the middle lane which did slow him for a moment there's a lot of poke coming out from that gragas karma lane and a lot of wave clear so it's very difficult for my insanity to siege this turret this blue looks to be under contestion here. Um, not quite sure why they're wanting to engage onto this. Oh, Solar Mike. Flare doesn't quite land the mark. There comes the Zenith Blade, but the ultimate from Lulu is going to knock a couple up. Leona actually got the shutdown onto Gragas, and can my insanity turn this one around? Perry dropped un under half health. Now looking for the follow-up. Gets tagged by a Q out from Karma, and the lockdown comes down. Mozilla picks one up, and here comes Vanillan into the fight. It looked like it was so good for my insanity, but it just turns out that Vanillan wasn't there at the beginning, and now the damage turns on. Pillar is going to knock up Lucian. He's going to be able to get away from this one just about, but SK now look to rotate. The ping's gone down on Baron, but they're looking towards the mid lane instead. My insanity just lost a team fight in mid, and they answer that with going to invade the enemy blue buff. I, I'm not quite sure what they were thinking, to be honest. This isn't solo queue. You, you, the enemy team is going to be more pre uh, prepared, I, I think is the word there. And they're not gonna just give up the map objectives like that. Yeah, it's, I mean, even blue buff is not worth that much right now. But as you were saying, you've got to expect that your opponents, while ahead, are going to secure their jungle fairly handily. They're not going to just let you walk in and take that one away. And it was kind of a product that my insanity were looking for a push in that middle lane. You could see it, but uh, there was so much deterrence from this Gragas Kale, uh, not Kale, sorry, Karma in this mid lane. As you can see, again, they clear the wave out so, so quickly here that my insanity wanted to do something with their position and kind of rotate it out to blue without really thinking about it all that much and you can see Perry is looking for this flank this is typically what you do with an Evelyn but Vanillin isn't with the team so this would be uh, a little poor time to engage Penguins does have the Grand Skyfall available he does look to be wanting to cast it he's off at the side I don't know whether it's enough to get them into this fight though because when you take into account uh, six on Karma, he's going to have uh, that defiance which when used around his teammate, that burst of movement speed will allow them to clear for the majority that uh, zoning area from Grand Skyfall and from there Pantheon's kind of a sitting duck for that first few seconds. There comes the Zenith Blade into the Solar Flare on a single target but it's Leona that's taking the brunt of that damage and the target they were looking at was a Karma that didn't even fall from that. That is not what they were looking for here. Penguins has dropped a very low from the side of that fight now SK have themselves the control for the next couple of minutes Dragon is up that is likely to be the objective they rotate out to SK are sat here saying yes we want to fight here yes that's fine come to our towers at, at the moment my insanity should be seating up and waiting for SK to come to them and just making sure that they aren't going to take too many objectives in the meantime doing so. Uh, th that of course being Dragon and Baron. So Vanillin's just going to root out two members of my insanity, make them uh, head back to base, but Turret finally fell in favour of my insanity in that middle lane, but there's the Dragon going over to SK Prime and SK Prime are just going to regather themselves here. Let's take a look. A couple of members have over a thousand gold, so wouldn't be surprised to see them head back to base to spend that once Gragas has cleared out that bottom wave. But 5, 2, and 6 on Exile. This is what we've seen time and time again from Exile on Gragas, and not surprising to see him having another great game here. It does seem that Lulu has finished her Athene's Un Unholy Grail. I think she's finally um, uh, decided that Exile's gone into his game. He had a bad uh, early game, and he's finally just been able to get into the gist of it. And they've now realized that, which I think may have been the reason why they're making bad engages. Oh, there's the Grand Skyfall into the culling. Nice disengage out from that explosive cast. And that was initiated by My Insanity, and now they're just getting chased down. Dropped low, Solar Flare lands onto two members. Zvanillan 
forces the flash out from Leona over the wall, trying to re-engage his Soz perfect, but they got to be careful here. Evelyn's going to chase under the turret, but I don't think Perry's quite tanky enough to be doing that without the minion wave, and that overall is a one-for-one. One. Jungler for support, but I don't think SK can continue to push here. While my insanity may be behind, that was a beautiful play by Soz. She flashed in, got the picks down, and backed off. And Kama was like, okay, so I'm going to live. And then the, and then the Cliss Lance came and, and killed her. Not even I was expecting that. And I was watching the <laughs> entire time. <laughs> I don't think I saw it either. So uh, that was just a nice play out of perfect to uh, pick up one kill from that fight at least and you have to think that that went some of the way to making sure that SK couldn't really do anything more with that because an inhibitor tower would be very problematic for my insanity to end up losing there so uh, nice save there out by my insanity but they're 10,000 gold behind here and that is an almost unsurmountable mountain to try and climb does look like that they are going to grab up their jungle and then look to fight again. Caitlyn just gonna give a little bit of poke to Renekton in mid lane. Svanillan's kind of slowed down in this game. I'm, I'm gonna be honest, uh, he was having such a good start to the game that it's not that he's not having any effect, it's just that Exile is once again being flashy as always, so Svanillan has uh, kind of not had the same effect in the last couple of minutes as he did previously. We'll see whether he can kind of get a little bit more farm and stamp his authority back onto this game, but uh, he's going to clear out some wards in... Uh, didn't actually get that one. Not quite the attack speed needed for that, but top lane tower is the pu next push here for SK. My insanity look a bit spread out here, and they've sent Lulu to go and deal with Trundle in the bottom lane. Of course, Trundle will be able to kill Lulu pretty easily if she does try and fight, and then he does have the teleport to go top lane. Yeah, they forced out the ultimate actually from Lulu in that bottom lane. So uh, that's already one of those disruptions so that that would have uh, been able to disrupt that teleport. Culling has been used just to clear the wave through just so they can't push the turret. But again, Trundle pushing down in that bottom lane. This is just a matter of time for SK until they find themselves in front of that turret when the culling is not available here and it should be on the next wave. Yeah, sadly, the next wave is not a cannon mini one again for SK. They do not have that kind of luck. It's not quite matching their pushing that well. The Grand Sky is going to come in. It is. Vanilla actually ends up netting back into the solar flare. That's a really nice takeoff, but an instant deletion by Gragas. Hicks one up. Perry picks up a second now, and that will surely spell the end of this turret for SK on the next minion wave. But Trundle, again, bottom lane still pushing in through. I don't think he's actually been able to touch the, the tower as of yet. He's just been there on the back door saying that if no one's there, he will come in and he will tear the door down, which Renekton doesn't seem to look like he wants. He's just wave clear and he knows he, knows he can't fight Trundle, so he's just going to make sure that there's no minions there for Trundle to attack the tower with. Oh, Exile is getting dropped low after they picked up the kill onto Perfect. There's the Zenith Blade and manages to pick that up for the Chosen One. And now that's all a product of Caitlyn not being available in that top lane. They couldn't push the tower and still try to uh, with a number of melee champions. And it's not really what you want to be doing in that situation. So SK, although they had a good fight, just really weren't able to capitalize on that one. And now Six is forced to inspire himself at that point to get away. But uh, my insanity hanging on for now. Yeah, they are going to take away my Eternity's blue buff with Trundle. That's a small consolation prize for Trundle right now. He'll be happy about that. Allows him to pillar every so often uh, more frequently. But uh, again, it's my insanity just keep losing little battle after little battle here. And it just kind of is escalating the gold. Now, SK Gaming up to nearly 13,000 in the lead from the 10,000 they were just a couple of minutes ago. It's uh, just a case of damage control for my insanity and it's not working yet. They do seem like they may want to contest Baron here. They have pushed my insanity back to their base. Uh, so... If they come out, they are going to be able to have any towers to, to run to, of course. Kaylin just going to throw out the Ace and Hull, do a little bit of damage onto Leona, try and get away from the ward, but 
Oh, there's the solar flare. Yona jumps right into the fight. That it was just a big bait out. But oh wow, no, it wasn't. Here comes Exile into the fight. Massive explosive cast. Picks himself up a double kill. Not even Renekton can survive through that damage. Now that Ran uh, Rabadans and the Void stuff have com have been completed onto Gragas. That caught me by surprise. I thought that was such a nice play out by my insanity to bait them in, but in comes Gragas from the side. We were just saying how he was making all the flashy plays t today. Well, I think that has just proved it. Yeah, he now puts himself at 10 and 3. I'm still taken aback by that massive explosive cask. I didn't see him coming from the side of the screen, so... They were all uh, grouped up so nicely for him as well. They, they were, it was a uh, perfect explosive cask. Even though he only got two kills out of it, I, I believe it was, he, he still did a hell of a lot of damage to everyone else there. And of course that is mean that they are going to be able to push out the lanes and well they aren't going to have enough people there to do Baron, it's certainly still a threat for my insanity. Yeah, they had Trundle there who typically does have good Baron damage, but one of the big points was Penguins was still alive, still had a, a fair amount of health left. He, he had enough that if he had chosen to steal, maybe he could have got it in there with a smite. So it's just a case that SK playing safe on this one, Mozilla might be caught out here, but he's got a deceptive amount of health remaining when you take into account. There's a Karma with him, and there you go. He turns back around. Is looking for that engage after the subjugate, but the rest of my insanity are here too. And Zvanillan is actually caught out on the wrong side of his team here. This could be disastrous if M if my insanity were able to pick him up quickly, but they're not able to. SK will take the dragon. Yeah, it's not a whole lot that my insanity could have done about that. As you said earlier, they are about 15,000 gold behind, which when you factor that in, it's not something that you want to just have a plain old 5v5 about. You, yeah, you kind of uh... want to force the fight around Baron, or you want them to kind of tower dive you like they did over at top lane. We'll see whether my insanity even get the position to do that, because uh, we'll, we'll see, because Perry is going to be able to just run past that stun, is looking for silver carry, there's the Agony's Embrace, lands onto two, gets the shield from that, Solar Flare lands onto the two members, his exile comes in instantly, deletes with the barrel roll and the explosive cast, and now the culling isn't doing as much damage as they'd like it to here, as Mozilla is looking to chase under the turret, but I think the call has been made by SK, just get the turret. Yeah, they don't have any minions, which may be the only consolation prize that my insanity will have left to take, but well, they don't have any minions, SK will just say there's a nice baron over here in the river. Come fight us or we will take it. Which... Yeah, and I, I don't think there's any way that my insanity can really contest this. There's, they're not even going to try. They have no jungler. Their uh, main engage tool from Solar Flare isn't available either, so... That's a pretty easy SK Baron there. So now, 33 and a half minutes into this game, SK nearly a 20,000 gold lead. So what we will most likely see next is a push up either the mid lane or the bottom lane. We normally don't see push a uh, pushes up the top lane due to the fact that it's so close to, to a Baron. Uh, meanwhile, in the mid lane, you know, it, it creates the general map uh, pressure, and if you do it over in the bottom lane, then it's so far away from, from Baron that if, if you get the inhibitor and have to back off to go to Baron next time, then they're all the way over on the other side of the map. And it's an interesting story here on patch 4.4 of the, the story between the junglers, because we were commenting about how Elise uh, isn't really picked so much right now either, so we're seeing... The, the same junglers we've seen in other respects, but other bands have been put forward, so we're not seeing as much Wukong. So we've got Eve against Pantheon, and these junglers couldn't have more different stat lines when you look at that deaths column. One death on the side of Eve, eight deaths on the side of Pantheon, and they haven't been able to get that Pantheon jungle rolling here, and it's just meant that the rest of their lanes have been out-pressured, and Lulu doesn't do too well when the rest of the lanes aren't doing well either. Now they push on towards this turret, Will my insanity choose to fight? 
Most likely not. I don't really think they can be able to do too much here. Of course, there is Pampion off on the bottom lane with the Grand Sky. He's going to have to go in very, very soon if he wants to make anything happen. Oh man, and I think they may have even lost their window there. There goes the inhibitor turret. They have to head back to heal. And now it's just going to be a fast rotate up towards that top lane. They've got the, the minion wave is about to push in. It's a large minion wave with that cannon wave. So uh, should be another turret going to them. This could be take two for the fight. There we go, it's going in now. Grand Skyfall has been used into that solar flare, but Agony's Embrace used in conjunction. They just did not get damage down there, and even without the Gragas ultimate, they are ripping through my insanity here. Penguins gets dropped very low. Exile, is that a, yeah, Exile, actually Zonia's, it looked like it was Pantheon for a second there, but Exile, Zonia's in, on the spot to keep himself alive. That's gonna be the first Nexus turret falling, soon to be followed up by the second. And that will be SK Gaming Prime advancing to the grand finals to meet Maus just a little bit later on this evening. They certainly lost their window in the mid lane. I, I think they lost it a lot earlier when they chose to fight unfavorable fights in the mid lane. Like I'm not, I'm not convinced that those fights in the mid lane, free in quick succession, were the best thing to happen to my insanity.